Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Africa, Paris. Those who believe, hope, and love receive Christ's kingdom of peace and eternal life. The coat was a sign of peace. Jesus enters Jerusalem in meekness and humility as the messianic king who offers victory and peace to his people. That victory and peace would be secured in the cross and resurrection, which would soon take place at the time of Passover. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Jesus Christ came to bring us the kingdom of God. He is the true King who offers peace, joy, and everlasting life for those who accept his kingship. Let the King of glory find a welcome entry into your heart and home. If you are able, please stand and join us outside for the blessing of the palms we will be assembling by the uh, old school building. Thank you.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches. With your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burial. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. And as he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds that they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, 
I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can bear me. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. No man can bear me. No man can bear me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man.
Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and from human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee should bend. Of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Woe to the man by whom 
he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. And among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? The one seated at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. Is it you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred a kingdom on me? that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, for I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you, you must strengthen your sisters and your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I'm prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But Jesus replied, Oh, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crowd this day, you, you will deny me times that you know me. He said to them, When I send you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. They replied, he said to them, For now, one who has some money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does need. Namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they all said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then, going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray. Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them, and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. <clears throat> Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping with grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to kiss Jesus. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they all asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop! No more of these! And he touched the servant's ear and healed him. 
And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. For this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around him. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man is with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But, then, but Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still, another insisted. Surely this man is But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock broke. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculed and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When they came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you would not believe. And if I question, you would not respond. For from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am not. Then they said, What about me have heard testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man receiving our people. He abolishes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is a Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You. You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is the sight of the people who is teaching him for all of the from Galilee. jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he had no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. And accused him of inciting 
the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation <coughs> in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flagged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion. And their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. After laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and your children, for indeed, the days are coming when, when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now, two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, but the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down in the middle. 
Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was studying homiletics in the major seminary at Catholic Theological Union, that was in 1985 and 1986, I had Dr. Kathleen Hughes as my, my preaching teacher. And uh, she had studied under uh, Balthazar Fischer in Germany on the rights of Christian initiation of adults. And she also uh, was an expert on him, a PhD from Louvain in Belgium and teaching at the University of Notre Dame all before she became a professor at Catholic Theological Union. And she wasn't designated to teach preaching that year, but she had to, because one of the professors left, and then she taught preaching, preaching one and preaching two, and then you could do an advanced preaching. But she told us, to always remember this one question, 
when you're preparing to preach? What is the word of life for today? What is the word of life for today? I was a nervous wreck when I gave my first homily. The question fits this celebration of Palm Sunday. What is the word of life today? from Isaiah, or Philippians, or the Gospel of Luke. Look at Jesus. There's three words that describe what happens. Isaiah says it, St. Paul says it, and so does St. Luke. Look at Jesus. We see healing. We see forgiveness and we see compassion. Healing. When the high priest aid, when his ear was cut off, what did Jesus do? He was being arrested. What did he do? He healed the slave. He healed the person who was with the high priest. One of the ones coming to arrest him, he healed him. What did he do when Peter denied him three times? He forgave him. What did he show on the cross? Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, they do not know what they do. And then he turns to the one of the criminals and says, This day you will be with me in paradise. That's the Jesus that we all know. That's the Jesus who makes a difference in our life every day. The one who heals, the one who forgives, the one who shows compassion. And that's the word of life as we begin this Holy Week. The cross would seem to many to be the end of his ministry. Perhaps the ultimate sign of its failure. But we see something different. It is not failure. It is healing, forgiveness, and compassion. And it's all based on the love of God for each and Let us stand and profess our faith, and we'll pray the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 14 or 15 in your Messiah. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord God is our help, who never abandons us. Assured of this steadfast love, we bring our needs and the needs of the whole world. Hear our Lord and fold us in your mercy. Hear our Lord and fold us in your mercy. For the church, that we may join Christ in letting go of control and power and allow the Spirit of God to sustain and renew us each day. Oh. 
Holy Week, guide us in these days and answer our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Son, O Lord, 
May our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and Bishop Joseph and Perry, our Episcopal Vicar, and all the ministers of your Gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the <laughs> Resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Africa, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Venerable Father Augustus Tolton, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
seated for our post communion prayer. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pritzker and Feinberg, SNMA chapters, present our annual health day, which will take place April 23rd at from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And the Father Clemens, Paul B. Smith Hall, and the Lower Level. Basic life support and AD certification will be done at that time, so you will receive a certificate. Our ushers are to be present there for this. Anyone here that would like to attend, you're more than welcome to. It is for the public as well as the ushers here and readers. The basic life support, ADD certification, health screening, educational workshops on high blood pressure, and heart health will also be available. So if you're interested in attending, you can either sign up in the narthex in the back, or you can call directly during normal business hours and register an RSVP there. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless. And Dr. Donna Farisi of our parish has arranged that with uh, Jackson uh, Lucas. And uh, it's very important. Uh, we're training our ushers and even some greeters if they want to do it uh, on CPR and uh, also how to use an AED machine. So. Uh, they'll be on April 23rd, so please remember to sign up. Uh, this past week, all of you know, there was uh, a murder around 114th in Peoria. One family lost three people. Uh, one of the ladies worked at St. Philip Neri School with Lisa. Lisa Pruitt, and they're always very close to Brenda Innes and Stephanie Innes and uh, Tasha McShane and also Gussie McShane and Lena Young. She was a Claver, and uh, we know that uh, St. Philip Neri and the Holy Name of Mary and uh, all of you who knew the Rileys are suffering right now. So let us remember to pray for their family, um, <clears throat> especially at this most difficult time that they're suffering so much. Um, about a month ago, we mailed the Holy Week schedule, which included a Lent Easter letter and two offering envelopes for Easter flowers, as well as Easter offering. And if you didn't receive that in the mail, we made, uh, you know, the database is one database now. But if you never filled out a registration form, um, you know, when you combine databases, sometimes information gets lost. So we would ask you to please let us know if you didn't receive a Holy Week schedule or the Eat Lent Easter letter and the offering envelopes. There are envelopes here, and in the bulletin today, we have a complete Holy Week schedule. It was in last week's bulletin, it's also in this week's bulletin. And um, I invite you to partake of all of the services. On Wednesday night, all of our seminarians and the whole SVD theology community, those studying for the brotherhood or the priesthood, are going to be here. They're preparing 
the evening prayer on Wednesday night, which is at 6.30, and we'll be praying back and forth, and we'll have a tenebrae, the lighting and extinguishing of the candles, and it's being prepared by uh, Deacon Carl and all our seminarians who have helped us so much during this past year. The whole theology community is joining us, which is about 35 people, and also Father Tracy's Carmelite community is coming that night. And afterwards, we'll have a nation soup called Pho to serve, and we'll also have pizza. <laughs> Enough pizza. So, uh, if you've never experienced an evening prayer service with Tenebrae, um, which includes the Lamentations of Jeremiah the Prophet, we ask you to come on Wednesday at 6.30. And then the next day, Holy Thursday, uh, we also have a Seder chicken soup and a Seder vegetable soup at 5 o'clock before the Mass begins at 6.30. And we're also inviting our confirmation candidates to be part of these services. So, Wednesday we have Bible study at 11 a.m. as usual, and we'll have confessions from 10 to 11 here in the church, and we'll have confessions at 1.30 to 2.30 following Bible study in the fellowship. So that's Wednesday. The same schedule for Wednesday is Bible study at 11 in the parish hall, and then confessions before 11, confessions after the Bible study. So with Father Tracy. <clears throat> and then Wednesday night, our seminarians are launching, launching us into the sacred triduum, which is the Seder soup at 5 o'clock, on Holy Thursday, and uh, the Mass of the Lord's Supper at 6.30, with the washing of the feet. And then Good Friday is Stations of the Cross at 12 noon, and the uh, uh, Mass of uh, the Passion of our Lord at 3 o'clock. And that's the reading of the Passion from John's Gospel with Holy Communion being served. There's no Mass on Good Friday. You're not allowed to give a Mass from Holy Thursday to the first Easter Mass, which will not be at 4 o'clock on Saturday, it will be at 7 p.m. Because we're not allowed to have a Mass until 7 o'clock on Holy Saturday. So, um, I'm very grateful to all of our Sunderians who have made a difference this past year. Uh, and helping with Deacon Merv to decorate the sanctuary and the church, and they've really made a difference, and so let us give them a, a thank you. We also work at the food pantry, they work in our parish office, and they're serving with us today. These two guys serve in the food pantry every week, the weekly food pantry. And the large group, along with Andrew, who makes sure that we get online every time we record a match. So, um, so the Easter vigil is at 7 p.m. and next Sunday, 9 and 11 30 p.m. So, if you haven't been to uh, Triduum, you know, the Triduum is the first liturgy on Mass of the Lord's Supper. Then you pause at the end of the liturgy with that oration at the end in the side chapel. And then the liturgy is paused till Good Friday at 3 o'clock. Then it's paused at the end of Good Friday to the first Mass of Easter. So if you haven't experienced the Triduum in a long time, I invite you to be a part of it. And if you can come to even one of the services, that would be great. It's a walk with Jesus through this Holy Week. And we invite you to walk with Jesus in thanksgiving for what he's done for us. And we're most thankful to our choir for getting us launched into Holy Week here on this Palm Sunday.
Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.